Well, actually, one of the, the big issues that IT companies have in, in the current environment, particularly related to the, uh, the recession that we've actually gone to, is that most of the IT people have been asked to start reducing, um, reducing costs. The budgets have been shrinking. At the same time, they're asked to deliver more and more to the business. The business that's in an environment where there's a lot of variability in the system. So they need a whole bunch of different things from IT without them always being able to understand exactly and know exactly in advance what it is. So in a nutshell, IT needs higher level of flexibility and agility but, and do what they do with a lower cost. And be in support of the business people to allow the business people to reduce the cost of operations, to allow them to gain new customers and increase their business, and to allow them to mitigate the risk in and around the environments. Computing is a really interesting concept. If I take it really down to earth, it's a little bit of a, a same concept as electricity. What you ultimately would like to have is actually that you can plug in in the wall and get all of your compute power in the same way that you get your electricity. Do you know where your electricity comes from? Probably not. And frankly, do you care? Absolutely not. Well, start thinking about, about computing power in the same way. It's out there somewhere. I don't need to manage. I don't have any headaches with it. The only thing is I use whatever I need and I pay for whatever I use when I need it. That's a little bit the concept that sits behind cloud. It would be the nirvana of the CIO. No headaches anymore about making those the environments first thing work. There is, is there is the public cloud. The public cloud Cloud is probably the one that is most known today. And it gets some names like Amazon Cloud Services, like Google uh, Apps Engine, like uh, Microsoft Azure, and a number of others. What it is, it's people that actually provide you compute power in a number of different ways, and we'll come back to those ways in a minute, I suppose, but in a number of different ways. And you run there alongside a whole bunch of other companies, and you all fundamentally run on the same platforms. To keep my analogy of electricity, like multiple companies are actually taking electricity coming from the same environment, the same concept. So that's the public cloud. Beside the public cloud, you have clouds that are more refrained into the people that are actually using them. The first one is called the community cloud, where a number of companies decide that they will share a certain amount of capabilities in the cloud amongst them. And I gave an example earlier today around product recall. Together with GS1, we created a service to allow retailers and food manufacturers to simplify the way that they can manage the recall process for products when they get a food problem. To, with two objectives in mind. One is reducing cost, the other one is being faster and as such reducing risks for people to be contaminated by this. The third one is private clouds. This is the same, still the same concept as a cloud, but rather than being available to all companies, it's only being available to one company. So it's one company within a standardized environment being capable of running all of their services together. In a last but not least, we call it hybrid clouds. And the concept of hybrid cloud is putting a number of different of those together. For example, you're a large company, you run your day-to-day -day business into your private cloud, but occasionally you need more capabilities, more capacity. In that case, what you will do is you actually spill over, if I can put it that way, start complementing the capabilities you have in your private cloud with the public cloud to actually address your needs at any all given moment. All of those, all of the ones that you named, being it infrastructure as a service, platform as a service, or software as a service, they all encompassed in that cloud concept. But obviously you do different things with them. So if you want to write your own programs and you want to need flexibility to manage the way you operate your data, to manage the way you um, uh, the way you handle your security, you probably want an infrastructure as a service. The concept of infrastructure, the, the best example, sorry, of infrastructure as a service is really Amazon Cloud Services. You get a lot of freedom. You run on top of Unix. You run on top of Linux. You run on top of Windows. But beside that, you have the flexibility. Second element 
is a platform as a service. Now you get a number of services that are provided to you. So for example, you have data management services. You have a program to program communication services. You have a number of those. So you get more capabilities, but by having more capabilities, you obviously have less freedom to play with them. That's typically what Microsoft Azure around the whole .NET framework and Google App Services around Java and Python actually provide to you. And then the third element is software as a service where you really use a software with its functionality. And the, the best known example is salesforce.com where you get all of that functionality but you use that. It's not made for doing something else. Why would I use cloud in the enterprise? There's a number of reasons. First of all, uh, the advantage of cloud, and particularly when you go into a public cloud, is that you don't need to own the infrastructure to actually run the cloud. So you move what is typically known as capital expenses all the way to operational expenses. And many CIOs love that because it helps their balance, it helps improve their stock price, and a number of other elements. The second element is because you use capabilities that are sitting in the cloud, you have this impression that you can grow and shrink your needs as and when you, uh, as and when you need. And you have this elasticity that people are speaking about. You can ramp up in a matter of minutes from 50 servers to 5,000 servers or 10,000 servers. Now, do you really need that? That's a whole different ballgame. But you have the capability of doing that in the, the cloud. Reason you may actually want to go for cloud services, is that you don't need to spend a lot of time between the moment you decide you need additional capacity and the moment you get additional capacity. It's a matter of minutes. So that really speeds your time to market. Okay, so speeding time to market, el elasticity with this impression of being infinite in the amount of capacity that you have available, and the movement from capital expenses to um, operational expenses. These are probably three good reasons why Data you may want to go to cloud. Are really there, and the way they've grown, they're there to manage, a v to manage variety. Most data centers have servers from all different types. Small ones, big ones, some running Unix, some running Windows, some running Linux, some running whatever other stuff. So it's all about the capability of managing complexity. The principle of cloud is that you simplify everything to make it cheap. So you use, of lo you use low end data servers, lo sorry, low end servers, all the same. Typically the equivalent of Opteron 2007s, okay, x86 servers. They're all the same. You manage standardization fundamentally rather than managing complexity. So again, different, you get different environments, Startups. you get different needs. And small and medium companies will move to the cloud first because it gets them away from a big headache, which is the having the need of manage, having and managing a large amount of servers. Largest enterprise are in a different environment. They already have those data centers, they already have those environments, they already have a, a whole bunch of applications that have grown over time. And not all the applications that are run on a data center today can just be transferred to the cloud. Most of them cannot. And so where I see them using the cloud is more in doing new things rather than in replacing the environments they have today. So for example, collaboration between multiple enterprises is something that as it's new, as people are actually starting to use it, may be a good space to actually start in the cloud. But running your ERP system that has been running for the last 10 years on SAP, why the heck would you move that away from the cloud the and cloud, put that don't somewhere Don't forget else. the fog, the feet on the ground. Not everything is rosy on the cloud. The cloud at this point in time is very much overhyped. So a number of people pretend that the cloud is going to do everything. It does not. There are some issues that you need to be aware of if you go to the cloud. One that I already talked about, which is, is your application cloud ready? How is your application written? Does it allow you to do multi-tenancy and a number of those other elements that you may need to actually run it in the cloud? How secure and how confidential is the information that you have? And as a result of that, 
can you put that information in the cloud today knowing the security levels you have in the cloud, which are limited up to a certain extent. Otherwise, once you put information in the cloud, realize that you don't know where that information is. And the United States, a number of years ago, came out with something which is called the Patriot Act, which allows them to access any information that is available in the United States. You don't know where your information will be located. It may end up in the United States. Are you okay that your information is being looked at by the American government? Yes or no? It's another one of those elements that are actually playing in and around the cloud where you may want to pay attention on. Um, there is also the aspect of the network bandwidth. If you need to transfer information from your own facilities to the cloud, and it's huge amounts of information, you may end up spending more time pumping the information in the cloud than actually using the information, using your own data center to actually reduce um, and, and address the information that you have. So there's a number of reasons where you may want to pay attention. There's one that I want to highlight, which is the lack of standardization today. The cloud is absolutely not standard at this point in time. Every cloud is different. So when you make a choice for a cloud, that's the one you're actually living with and you have no choice there. Um, and it's not easy to transfer from one to another. And the last point, Cloud services are often provided by a supply chain of companies. You only see the first company, the one that delivers you the services. But are you sure that that company delivers all the services themselves or that they are dependent from other companies to actually deliver those services? In that case, who are those other companies? And how do those other companies, what is their financial strengths? How serious are they? And a whole bunch of other elements like that. So you have to think and try to understand how the supply chain of your cloud service provider is and who is actually three things in the cloud. First, we are providing infrastructure to a lot of cloud service providers. In we have the capabilities of doing very highly scale out environments and really provide them with the infrastructure that they actually require through uh, what we call pods, which is basically performance optimized data centers that are eventually sitting in containers and a whole bunch of other stuff in that area. Secondly, we're working with customers to, on the one hand, help them plan how they would move to the clouds. And once they've made the decision to move to the cloud, to actually check with them whether the architecture that they are going to use and the infrastructure and the cloud services they use are secure, have high service level agreements, and can really be used and address the business that they're actually into. And thirdly, we provide our own cloud services. I gave the example from the uh, food recall service, which is one of those services, but we have more consumer oriented services that are very well known, like Snapfish, like HP Gabble, which is a sort of a video based Twitter, um, like Mac Cloud or Book Prep or a number of others of those. So we provide the infrastructure to others, we help people move to the cloud, and we provide our own cloud services.